So the quickest way to test for a bad coolant temperature sensor is number one, get yourself a pot of boiled water. Number two, get yourself a basic multimeter. Number three, get yourself some alligator clips. And basically, that's all you really need. So what you wanna do is take one side of the uh, jumper wire, connect it to one of the lead, and the other jumper wire to, uh, to the other side of the lead. Now you see here, we have a resistance reading. If you have a resistance reading, there's a good chance that your coolant temperature sensor is good. If it shows no reading at all, that means your coolant temperature sensor is faulty and most likely it is shorted or open. Now we have a resistance reading to determine if the coolant temperature sensor is good or not, is that this resistance should start to decrease as the temperature of the coolant start to increase. As you can see here, resistance is starting to decrease. So that means the coolant temperature sensor is working properly. So now we are done with testing. How do you know the coolant temperature sensor is bad or faulty without removing it? Because sometimes these sensors, the coolant temperature sensor is buried underneath an intake manifold or somewhere that's hard to get to. And sometimes you don't always want to remove it just to test it. So let's talk about some of the signs and symptoms you should look for. So the most common sign is going to be overheating. So basically this coolant temperature sensor is input sensors and it sends signal to the computer. So if it's sending an accurate signal to the computer, the computer may think that the engine is running cold. So basically it is it thinks it's reading cold coolant. So when this happens, and let's just say the engine is getting hot, the computer is going to think that the engine is actually cold. So what this is going to happen is that it's going to prevent the radiator fan from kicking on and turning on to cool down the engine. The next common sign is going to be hard start. If the coolant temperature sensor is sending incorrect signal to the computer, it's going to cause the fuel injector to spray a lot of fuel into the combustion chamber. So when this happens, it can cause the uh, engine to have a hard time starting, especially when a spark plug becomes too wet from excessive uh, fuel being sprayed onto it. So when the computer thinks that the engine is running cold due to a faulty coolant temperature sensor, it, again, it's gonna cause a lot of fuel to be dumped into the combustion chamber. So when this happens, it's gonna cause a very rich mixture. So when you have extremely rich fuel mixture, it's going to be, there's going to be more fuel being dumped into the exhaust. So when this happens, you're going to notice black smoke coming out of, the, out of the exhaust, and you're going to notice the uh, tailpipe is going to become full of black soot. Since now we know that the coolant temperature sensor could affect air and fuel mixture, causing it to become more rich, so you're going to notice poor gas mileage and increase uh, fuel consumption. Since we know that the coolant temperature sensor can throw off the air and fuel mixture, this can also cause rough idling. So if you notice that you have rough idle, go ahead and check for coolant temperature sensor codes. So what I like to do is I like to use a scan tool with live data and check the live reading of the coolant temperature sensor. So basically, as the engine starts to get hot, you can see the temperature start to rise. For example, at startup, you may see like it might be at around like 120 degrees, then start to increase to like 130, 140, and 150. It's going to hit 180 and 200, and the radio fan is going to kick on. If you don't see any of that reading, there's a good chance that the coolant temperature sensor is faulty. Also, if you check the reading, it may show zero reading or negative 40, and that's how you know this is also faulty. And it may be shorted or there may be an open somewhere in the wire.